CompTIA A Plus Core 1 Complete Training Course. Exam Objective 2.2. Compare and Contrast Common Networking Hardware. This video is designed to give you a foundational understanding of key network devices and the knowledge essential for anyone aspiring to pass the CompTIA A Plus Core 1 Certification Exam. To kick things off, I will start with a rather antiquated or outdated device, the Network Hub. The Hub is a basic networking device that connects multiple computers or other network devices together. When a hub receives data from one device, it broadcasts that data to all the other connected devices. As a visual, you can imagine a hub as a speaker making a public broadcast announcement, thus sending the same message to everyone in a room. By sending the same data to all computers inside a network, without distinguishing which device the data is meant for, the hub is inherently less efficient and less secure compared to more advanced devices like network switches. Due to these limitations, hubs are mostly obsolete. At the heart of any modern local area network, you are likely to find a network switch or maybe multiple switches if the network is large and complex. A switch is a network device that connects multiple devices within a local area network. It acts similarly to a network hub, allowing devices like computers, printers, servers, or other end devices to communicate with each other by forwarding data packets on the same LAN, but with a few improvements. Think of a network switch as a traffic controller in a network. It receives data packets from one device and intelligently forwards them to the intended recipient, ensuring efficient and direct communication between devices within the network. Network switches commonly use Ethernet cables or CAT cables to connect end devices to the ports on the network switch and communicate using the Ethernet protocol. When a device wants to send data to a specific device within the LAN network, it encapsulates the data into a data packet. This data packet will contain the destination address, the sender's source address, and the actual data or payload being transmitted. This encapsulated data packet is then given the name Ethernet frame. The switch then receives the data packet and examines the destination address. It then uses this information to determine the best path or port to forward the packet to the intended device. This direct forwarding allows for fast and efficient communication between devices. Network switches fall into two primary categories, unmanaged and managed switches. Unmanaged switches are the simpler option, providing basic connectivity without requiring any configuration. These plug-and-play devices are especially suitable for small networks, such as those in small office or home office environments. Typically, they come with a limited number of ports, with configurations of four or eight ports being the most common. This simplicity makes unmanaged switches an ideal choice for straightforward networking needs. Managed switches, on the other hand, are designed for larger, more complex networks. While they can function like unmanaged switches out of the box, they offer a significant advantage in terms of configurability. Administrators have the ability to access and configure these switches, allowing for the implementation of advanced features such as security protocols, network traffic control, and the segregation of different types of network traffic, like voice communications. This feature is particularly important in networks where ensuring the quality and reliability of specific traffic, like voice traffic, is paramount. Managed switches are frequently used in corporate environments and typically come equipped with a higher number of ports, often including 24, 48, or more, to accommodate a larger scale of network devices. Now, let's talk about the access point, or AEP. An access point, also called a wireless access point, is a network device that allows wireless communications between devices in a network. It connects Wi-Fi-enabled devices, such as laptops or smartphones, to the network. Access points are used to provide wireless connectivity in homes, offices, and public spaces, 
enabling mobility and flexibility in network access. It may be easier to think of a network access point as a wireless version of a switch. It acts as a bridge between devices and the network, creating a wireless connection for them to communicate with each other. But how does a wireless access point work with other wired networks? Well, it's quite simple. The wireless access point takes the data packets it receives from devices such as smartphones, tablets, and laptops and transmits it wirelessly to the network. Similarly, it receives data from the network and sends it wirelessly to the devices connected to it. This two-way communication allows devices to access the network and share information with each other seamlessly. Now, you might be wondering how devices connect to a wireless access point. Well, it's as easy as connecting to a Wi-Fi network. When you turn on your device's Wi-Fi, it scans for available wireless networks. And when it detects a wireless access point, it prompts you to connect to it. Once connected, you can access the network's resources and communicate with other devices in the network, just like you would in a wired network. So if an access point sounds a lot like a switch, you are right. An access point is just a wireless version of a switch that provides local device connectivity. By now, you may be realizing that computer networks are basically a digital highway, connecting devices together to facilitate communication and resource sharing. And just as highways have intersections and signs to guide traffic, networks have switches to direct data packets. But switches are not the only devices used to control traffic. We also have network routers. A network router is a network device that directs data packets between different computer networks. Yes, this is similar to a switch, with the exception that a switch directs traffic within a local area network, and a router controls data packets entering or leaving a local area network. But how does a network router actually work? Well, when a device wants to send data to another device in a different network, it compiles a data packet. These data packets will contain a source IP address and a destination IP address. If the data packet has a destination IP address that is not located within the current network, the data packet will then seek out the router. The router examines the packet's destination address, much like reading a street sign, and determines the most efficient path for the data to reach its intended destination. To sum up a router, a router is a gateway sitting at the edge of a network's broadcast domain controlling inbound and outbound connectivity to other networks. These could be other directly attached local area networks, or more commonly, they are installed between a local area network and a wide area network connection like the one provided by an internet service provider or ISP. To close out this video, I have one more device to cover, the Sobo router. Having just covered the topics of network switch, access point, and router, I figured now would be a great time to discuss how these devices fit into a smaller setting of a home or a small business environment. The type of networking equipment used in a home or small business environment can be described as SOMO, where SOMO stands for small office, home office. This particular type of network will commonly utilize a multifunction network device referred to as a SOHO router. But don't let the name fool you. Though similar in some aspects, this is not like the enterprise-grade router we studied earlier in this exam objective. A SOHO router can perform routing functions, but that is not all it can do. So let's break down the main components that make up a SOHO router. First up, we have the network switch. You may recall that a network switch is a network device that connects multiple devices within a local area network. And yes, the Soho router has a built-in network switch. It may not have as many ports as an enterprise switch, but it will still function the same. The Soho router displayed here can only connect four computing devices together in an Ethernet LAN. The switch ports are the yellow RJ45 ports, located inside box number one. Next, we have the access point. As a refresher, 
The access point is a network device that allows wireless communications between devices in a network. And yes, the Soho router has a built-in access point too. It may not support as many wireless clients as an enterprise access point, but it will still function the same. The Soho router displayed here as an antenna inside box number two that can transmit and receive Wi-Fi signals. Lastly, let's talk about the router itself. The router is the gateway between your Soho network and the internet or ISP. That is where box number three comes in. This is your wide area network or WAN connection. Pretty cool how a Soho router seamlessly integrates all these components into one compact device. If you are dealing with a limited number of computing devices in your network, a Soho router would be the perfect choice to provide network connectivity. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.